Good afternoon. God has blessed us with some sunshine. But of course it always shines, just sometimes the clouds cover it over. First, let me thank you for choosing this very special day with me and my family and our state. You know, Inauguration Day is always a special day in our state and in also in our country because it serves as a symbol of what our country is all about. The people elect their leaders. And then there's a peaceful transfer of power. And as we've seen in other parts of the world, that is something to cherish and to celebrate, no matter what your political affiliation. Inauguration days are times of new hope and expectations, but they're also a time of reflection. And as we look back over the last eight years, we owe a debt of gratitude to Governor and Mrs. Riley for all they've done for our state. I would also like to thank Governor Riley and his staff for the smooth transition between the end of his administration and the beginning of ours and for making sure that we have a seamless transfer of power. When administrations work together, it's always what's best for the people of Alabama. I want to also thank my family. And I want to thank them for their support and their sacrifice during these past several months. I want to especially thank my wife, Diane. She's going to be a wonderful First Lady. She has sacrificed so much for me, but always supported me. And most importantly, she always prayed for me. Her character and her wit and her servant's heart will serve her well as your First Lady. God has blessed me with a wonderful family. And I'm honored to have all these with me today, all my grandchildren, my daughters-in-laws, my sons, and I'm so glad to have them with me today. I also want to thank my staff, uh, those of you who have worked tirelessly alongside me because you believed, like I do, that Alabama's best days are ahead. I'll always be grateful for your love and for your appreciation and for your dedication. Today, as I take the oath of office as governor of the state of Alabama, I will never forget that no matter what my official title may be, I am a servant of the people. We live in a great state where somebody like me who came from humble beginnings can grow up and be chosen as its leader. So most of all, I want to thank you, the people of Alabama, for giving me this opportunity to be your public servant. I've said all along, and I now work for you, the citizens of Alabama. I feel like I've spent the last 18 months interviewing for a job. And I'm proud now and humbled that I have been given that job. Now that you, the people, have hired me, I no longer am the Republican candidate for governor. I am the governor of all Alabama. All Alabama includes Republicans, Democrats, Independents, young and old, black and white, rich and poor. My job is to make all of our lives better together. And let me also say how I look forward to working with a new leadership in our House and new leadership in our Senate. Uh, we've already begun to accomplish much in that, those bodies. I'm particularly honored to be inaugurated on a day celebrating the life of our, one of our country's most influential leaders. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King preached about facing challenge and adversity not far from where we stand today. 
Dr. King once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. I believe these words continue to ring true. I know these are challenging times for many of our citizens. I've looked into the eyes of those who've lost jobs and can't feed their families. I've talked to people who've lost their homes. What I'm trying to say is, I know times are tough. I've seen the challenges. But as I've traveled across Alabama, I've also been reminded of the strength and the determination of our resilient people. I want to take a moment to encourage you to do what I've done. Travel this state. Take time to enjoy the beauty of Alabama. Visit the mountains of North Alabama. Enjoy the clear lakes and the streams and stroll the main streets of our small towns in rural Alabama and spend some good quality time down on the beautiful, clean beaches at Gulf Shores. I believe if you do this, you will learn what many of us already know in our lives, that we're fortunate to live in a remarkable state. We have so much to celebrate in Alabama today, our past and our future. I've always been an optimist. Maybe it goes back to the fact that I'm a doctor. But I've always believed that if you listen to your patient, you can make a diagnosis. When you make the diagnosis, you work with the patient and you come up with a solution. You don't cure every disease, but working together, you can come up with some solutions. And after talking and listening to so many people across this state, I know that working together will make things better for the people of Alabama. Now that process has already begun. Because of the new ethics laws proposed and signed by Governor Riley and passed with the guidance of these outstanding legislative leaders, we have started the process of implementing the toughest ethics package in the country. This is an excellent start to what I know will be a great working relationship. Now we can focus on helping the people who elected us rather than arguing about the need to get our own house in order here in Montgomery. The people of this state are counting on us to focus on them, not on ourselves. All across America, people are looking for leadership. If nothing else, the 2010 elections told us The people of America are fed up with business as usual. They're tired of partisan politics, and most of them are tired of the federal government. They want action, not arguments. Americans are looking to their own state governments to provide leadership, as they should. And we're going to do that in Alabama. We live in a great country, and we will work with the federal government when we can, but they will not dictate our every move. As elected representatives, we answer to you, the people of Alabama, not to politicians and bureaucrats in Washington. I will defend our right to govern ourselves under our own laws and to make our own decisions without federal interference. But I will also remember the words of the Declaration of Independence that was signed by our brave forefathers on July the 4th, 1776. And they said this, that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. These unalienable rights cannot be surrendered, bought, or sold because they come from our Creator, not from the government.
In Alabama, from this day forth, government will, be, will only be an instrument for the protection of these rights. As I have said time and time again, we will put Alabama back to work. One of the most important things government can do in our state is to help create jobs in the private sector. There are many challenges that we must address as we move Alabama forward, but creating jobs is the key to addressing all of these challenges. When Alabama is at full employment, our citizens have money to spend, our tax revenues increase, and our economy thrives. A thriving economy can lead to better education for our children and can open the doors to improve health care for the vulnerable among us. Most importantly, when Alabama is at full employment, it will mean that along with a job, we have restored hope and purpose to thousands of fellow citizens. To those Alabamians who have been out of work for months and are discouraged and losing hope, I want you to know that I will work every day to create new jobs in the private sector. And so will everyone else in state government. We must continue to create a business climate that makes our communities competitive when we're recruiting new industry into this state. But we must also remember that most new job creation comes from existing businesses, and we must offer the same tax breaks and tax incentives to them. We must acknowledge that job creation is everybody's business and the state government needs an attitude adjustment. If you work in government in Alabama, job creation must be your focus. This is a directive from your chief executive. I'm going to direct every state agency to do whatever it can to work with the private sector and create jobs. We're going to have to be very creative in this method. Agencies that are not typically focused on job creation will certainly have to be now. Whether it's the Department of Transportation installing a turn lane so a Dollar General store can open on time and employ people, or whether it's the Department of Conservation as they helped me build a first-class convention center at Gulf Shores. You have heard me make this promise. I will not accept a paycheck until we reach a level of defined full employment. Now it is time that we, the men and women elected by you, remember this. We all work for the citizens of this state, and we have 4.5 million bosses. I challenge every elected official to join me in pledging to be a true public servant, a servant leader for the people of this state. We must be more committed to creating jobs and doing what's right for our citizens than keeping our own jobs in the next election cycle. Jesus showed his disciples by example that in order to be a great leader, you must first be a servant. And he demonstrated this by the lowly act of washing the disciples' feet. As public officials, now is not the time to be self-serving. It is not the time to be, remain silent or inactive or apathetic. Now is the time for us to come together, take on the challenges we face, and make life better for the people of our state. The challenges are great. But as Mordecai told Esther, as she placed her life in jeopardy to save our Jewish brethren, how do we know that we have not been placed here today for a time such as this? 
In these times of challenge, we must stand on the principles that unite us. We all want a good job and be able to take care of our families. We all want our state to be a great place to where we can live and to work. Working together, we can accomplish these goals. Working together, we're going to get through these tough times. We are going to put Alabama back to work. And I truly believe that Alabama's best days are ahead. As the sun shines on this beautiful capital here today, and as I look over this crowd, may I just say this. May God bless you. May God bless this great country that we live in. And may God bless the greatest state in America, Alabama. Thank you very much.